By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have some beautiful action for you because we're going to look at the X Points final number 21 already. Man, they're doing so many tournaments there. And this time the finals is between John Dittert, who's on a disco troll list. He's made some interesting choices, so I'm looking forward to show you his deck photo. He's taking on Andreas, and Andreas is playing a white and black deck based on the artifact card, The Wreck. So it's a The Wreck deck, and I haven't seen that in the finals of X Points yet. So I'm really looking forward to kind of see that deck in action and see how good is The Wreck in this format. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with X Points, which is kind of unlikely, but maybe you are, X Points is... Um, a, a, a system of old school, old school rules that is based on a points list. So here you can see the points and it means that if you want to play with cards that have points on them, you can only spend 10 points in total. For example, if you want to play Ancestral Recall, Library of Alexandria and Mind Twist all together, that will be 12 points. So that will be too much. So you can't, you can only spend 10 points max. So when you're building your deck, you got to keep this point system in the back of your mind. You know, you cannot just list put all the power cards in your deck. That's not gonna work. So obviously the idea of the point system is to make the games more balanced and to create more diversity in the decks. The nice thing is the point system is also changing over time, right? It's not a set list, it's in progress based on the results and the input from the X Points community. Talking about the community, they have a Facebook page. I've got a link in the description below. It is free to join, it's free to join the tournaments. So if you think, hey man, I like this format, Take a look on their Facebook page and maybe you can join in into their next tournament. They have a new tournament every single month. Now, before I jump into the deck deck, I would just quickly like to point out that if you want to go directly to the games, I know some people do they want to go to the games first, do the deck decks later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there I've put several timestamps, including a timestamp named MTG Games. If you click on there, it'll take you straight to the action. And as for now, I'm going to start with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of John. Let's take a look at his Disco Troll. And here we see the deck of John Dittert. So this deck, I would call it a Disco Troll deck for the simple reason that we see four Nevenerals disc and four Setch Trolls. Now, the Disco Troll deck is quite simple. A Nevenerals disc, of course, the board wipe in old school, it destroys all artifacts, enchantments, and creatures in play. Now, because it says destroys, you can still regenerate your creatures. So Setch Troll is a 2-2, basically a 3-3. It's one of the better creatures, especially in red, and you can regenerate it. And that means that it goes really well with the disc. You detonate the disc and you regenerate your troll, so your troll survive. All the other creatures are wiped out of existence. Uh, the disc also goes really well with three other cards here in the deck of John, and that is the three Mishra's Factories, because a Mishra's Factory, when it's still a land, it doesn't get destroyed by the Nevenerals disc. So after disc activation, it wipes the board, and then after that, you can animate your own factories and you can attack with them, which, you know, which, which is kind of good. Um, the interesting thing here is, though, that he hasn't built his whole deck around the Nevenerals disc theme. He's combined it with so just some really good creatures that I think, especially the Hypnotic Spectre, they're just so good that your opponent has to deal with them anyway. You know, as soon as a hippie hits the board, it's kind of a red flag for the opponent and the opponent will have to, to do something, probably put a bolt on it or a swords. I mean, it, it, it's a card you have to act upon. So a chance, my point here is that the chance that you'll use your own Evanerals disc against your own Hypnotic Spectre, it, it's highly unlikely because a hippie is usually killed in sight anyway. So um, I kind of understand the combination and then more in the late game of the deck we see two Sengir vampires those are kind of the fatties of the deck i uh, do like the four kumbach witches here by the way it's a one three creature from arabian Nights. it's kind of the timmy in black um you can tap it to uh, deal one damage to any target and then your opponent can deal one damage back to you and to any target basically that your opponent chooses so you, you it can be a little risky, but it's really good against all those 1-1 uh, one -one creatures, obviously. Uh, then when we look at the rest of the deck, we see four him to Turex. So he spent some points on those hymns. I believe they're one point each. So him to Turek, of course, one of the better cards in Fallen Empires, two black, and target opponent discards two cards. And um, then we also see, of course, some of the usual suspects. We see four bolts, we see a disintegrate, we see a fireball, those are great. We see some temple cards there in the form of uh, two sinkholes, so that's quite good. We see two terrors main, which is interesting, right? There was 
a time when people would rather play Paralyze over Terror, but I think X-Points is such a creature-heavy format that you probably always have a target for your Terror anyway, so it makes sense to play two main. We also see two Shatter's main. Again, artifacts, of course, are always strong. What I find interesting with this list is that there's no ramp. There's no ramping at all. There, there are no Moxin, there are no Felwer Stones, there are no Dark Rituals, so it's really just turn one, land, turn two, land. It's I wouldn't say it's a slow deck, because, you know, turn two, you have Kumbach Witches, turn three, you have Hippie. Of course, you can have him to Turek, turn two as well. Um, you know, then turn four, you probably play your Set Stroll because you want to keep regeneration mana open. So th th there's a nice buildup in the deck, but um, it, it cannot go faster, right? So maybe that's a little opening for uh, Andreas, the opponent today. You know what? Let's take a look at Andreas deck and see if he has some, uh, some tempo tricks up his sleeve. And here we see the deck of Andreas. So it's white and it's black. And we also see three the rack in this deck. And I think that's kind of the theme. I think this is really a discard deck here. So uh, the rack is an artifact. Maybe start with that card. It's one to cast from the Antiquities expansion. And it reads, at the beginning of the chosen player's upkeep, the rack deals X damage to that player, where X is three minus the number of cards in their hand. So of course, when you play it, you're gonna choose your opponent. Then when your opponent has three cards in hand, they get no damage right then they're safe so three and up is safe but when you've got two cards in hand you take a damage one card two damage and zero cards uh, three damage so that's going to be painful it's kind of the opposite of the black vice now how are you going to make sure that your opponent doesn't have a lot of cards in hand the most obvious and effective uh, way to do it is of course casting him to Turek. So him to Turek, the card that I also discussed in the deck of, uh, of John, two black to cast, and you're forcing your opponent to discard two cards. Now on top of that, he's also playing with disrupting scepters. There are three to play, it's an artifact, three and tap, target opponent needs to discard a card, but the opponent gets to choose, that's an important thing. And of course, another discard uh, card in this deck is the Hypnotic Specter. So two black and one to cast for this two, two flyer, when it deals damage, your opponent has to discard a card at random. So there's quite some discard in this deck. I do think that it's going to be tough here for uh, for Andreas to kind of pull this off because I think his hypnotic specters, they're not going to survive the bolts. You know, I think they're probably going to die. There's always a chance, though, that your opponent doesn't have that bolt and you can just start attacking. That's definitely an option. Also, he is playing with Black Knights, which I kind of like because sometimes by playing a Black Knight before your hypnotic specter, your opponent can waste their bolts on the Black Knight, and then after that you play your Hippie, and then your opponent doesn't have it anymore. Talking about wasting bolts, he's also playing with two Royals and two Kumbach Witches. Hey, so the Kumbach Witches is something we saw on the deck of John as well. So that's kind of funny, a final where both players play with this card. Um, I think I'm really excited uh, to see Royal Assassin, but again, I think it, it's not gonna gonna do much in, in this matchup. But again, we'll see, I've been wrong before. Maybe, you know, Royal Assassin will be a deal breaker in these matches. And then of course we see just a little bit of, of white, by the way, we don't see a lot. We see the, the usual suspects, two disenchants, three swords and a balance. I think that balance could be quite good actually for uh, for Andreas in this match, especially considering that, uh, that John is playing with discs. So maybe, you know, he's gonna have a huge disc activation, feel really safe. And then, um, you know, Andreas comes back with a balance move and then in that way still killing all the set trolls, for example, on the on the side of John, that's definitely a possibility. We also see four dark rituals, by the way, in the deck of Andreas. So that is kind of interesting because John has chosen not to play with the dark rituals, um, but Andreas has. So I'm just kind of trying to see and gonna find out. Okay, is it good to play with rituals or not? Like who who has the upper hand here? Is it really a good tempo play, or is it gonna bite Andreas? You know, is it gonna bite Andreas back because? Sometimes these dark rituals, they can set you up for two for one and they can just end up being disastrous, but sometimes they can be marvelous. I mean, if you've got a turn one hip hippie and John doesn't have that bolt, I mean, that's just great. Uh, but again, if he does have that bolt, it's really bad because it's a two for one. I also like talking about the ritual. I do like the combination dark ritual and drain life. I think that's really good. Another thing I kind of like in this deck here, in this specific matchup, are the two anime deaths. I think they're quite good or can be quite good against uh, John's deck because of the Nevenerals discs. And of course, John doesn't have access to, you know, Tranquilities or Disenchant. So a, a well-timed anime deck could be quite nice. In the sideboard, we also see the Circle of Protection Reds. They can be good to protect him from direct damage. On the other hand, you know, John has so many black creature threats as well. I'm, I'm, yeah, 
it's not going to bother him that much. Anyway, uh, we've looked at the deck of Andreas. We've looked at the deck of John. I personally think it's about a 60-40 in favor of John. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And uh, now that we've looked at both of these decks, it means it's time. We are ready. Let's go to the finals of X Points 21. Game number one of the X Points Finals number 21. Look at that John Dittert here starting with a double mulligan. So starting with only five cards and he's on the play. John Dittert is playing a black and red disco troll deck against Andreas who's on black and white, a the wreck deck. So of course this is a great start for Andreas because he wants John to be low on cards. There's his second black. Are we going to see him to Turek? No, we're going to see a Kumbach Witches. Both players are playing the Witches today. It's a 1-3 creature from Arabian Nights. You can tap it to deal 1 damage to any target. And then uh, if you target uh, Andreas, he can deal 1 damage back to any target as well. There we see Andreas. There is a hint to Turek from him. Both players playing with 4 hint to Tureks. That means John will only have 1 card left after this. That is brutal. Remember, it is at random. So this is just a horrible start of the finals uh, for John here, finding himself with only one card in hand. And this is great for Andreas. I mean, turn two and his opponent is almost out of cards. Remember, he's playing with three, the wreck. I guess the only danger for Andreas is if, you know, once John has ran out of cards, if he finds more discard spells that are kind of uh, useless for him, then look at that, a hint to Turek from John as well. This is really the finals of the hint to Tureks. We've got eight him to Turex in total, with both players playing with a full playset. And here's Andreas shuffling up, trying to put a dice there on his cards. So it's a four and a five. Let's see what cards Andreas is gonna lose. A Jalen Tome and a land there, a scrub land. But he still has four cards left, and there is a uh, Mishra's Factory. Also the attack, by the way, by the Kumbach Witches, meaning Andreas drops to 19. There is a Scrubland, tapping three. There is a Disrupting Scepter. And the Scepter actually is not great here, because uh, John is on top decking mode. Look at that, an attack for three, so aggressive magic here from John. Trying to put some pressure on only one card in hand. Perhaps it's a red card here for John. So Andreas can uh, force John here to discard that card with the Disrupting Scepter. It does cost three though to use. So let's see what he's going to do. Yep, using the Scepter, forcing John to discard his card. There's a Terror. No target, of course, on board. Look at that. No lands for Andreas. Just a pass. And again an attack for 3, so he's going to drop the 13. And at a certain point Andreas will have to start playing a blocker. Drawing a card for turn. He needs some more land, you know, that's the thing, Disrupting Scepter costs 3 per activation, which is quite steep. Okay, that's a pretty good one here, Chaos Orb found by Andreas. He could flip here on the... I guess I would go for the factory personally because it deals 2 damage and you take care of land. Let's see what he chooses. Oh, he misses the flip though. Misses the flip. Ooh, and that kind of creates an opening here for John. Like, I, th I thought John was kind of, you know, buried, but he's dealing damage and kind of doing what he can you know look at this Andreas dropping to 10 this is turning in a, into a very interesting match two cards in hand now for John I mean this is difficult for Andreas kind of looking there he's got a hint to Turek so he could play a him force John to discard both cards but then he'll take three damage again he's gonna drop to seven in that case I also saw I believe a, was that a white card in hand, perhaps, for Andreas. You could kind of have this little peek at his hand there. But uh, it's difficult for him. Like, he just needs lands, basically. What you want to do when you're Andreas, you want to do two things, right? And use your scepter and play something out. But with, with three lands, you simply can't. I think you also want to have a disenchant for the factory. 
I mean, after missing that flip, that was a pretty brutal miss. Tapping one black, what are we gonna see? Maybe Dark Ritual? Okay, Dark Ritual. Maybe he's got a Sengir Vampire, that would be kind of good. Let's see what he can do. And we see another screen uh, dropping in here, so we're just gonna wait a second. Exactly, now it's gone. So Andreas played the Dark Ritual, and oh, he's playing a balance. Interesting, so he's playing a balance. That means he's gonna lose to Kumbach Witches. Perhaps Andreas also has two cards in hand, three cards in hand here, so he's got a discard. He's gonna discard a scepter, it makes sense. Then, look at that, then he plays the Royal Assassin. That makes sense, because a Royal, of course, was really bad when the Kumbach Witches was still around, because the Kumbach Witches could kill the Royal, but now he's able to play the Royal safely, and I think the last card in hand there is a him to Turex, so he could him next turn. So he's on 10, there's an attack for 2, so he's going to drop to 8, I guess, exactly. I mean, look at the life total of John, he's still on 20, he hasn't taken a single damage. Ooh, there's a, a mountain, are we going to see a lightning bolt on the Royal Assassin here? I guess we're just going to see a pass, so he's giving Andreas an opening here. Let's see if I'm correct about the him in hand. Tapping two. Okay, there's the him to Turek. So, ooh, in response, tapping the red, lightning bolt. Probably on the royal, exactly, because that means he can keep attacking with the factory. Also losing his shatter here. And things are really looking good for John. I'm surprised ever to, after the double mull at the start of the game and the him to Turek from Andreas, I thought it was kind of over for him. But look at him go. Six now for Andreas. There's a bad lance and a pass here. Andreas really needs a disenchant, a sword, or, you know, actually a black knight would be quite good, a 2-2 two -two for a strike to stop that factory. Kumbach witches could be quite good. Just something to stop the factory. There's uh, another land that's not going to cut it for him past turn. And of course, John is just going to attack. He's going to keep doing what he's doing. Coming in for two. Is Andreas going to drop? Going to drop to four. Unbelievable here. There's a Kumbach Witches. It's really looking good for John. There is another land. Amazing here. Andreas just doing nothing. Going to take three. Going to drop to one. And with that Kumbach Witches... Wow, after looking at that start of the game. Oh, and it's that's done. It is done. John winning this. Unbelievable. I mean, after that start with double mulligan and the hint to Turek, and he still manages to win this one. I mean, it shows you that even, even if you're dead and buried, just keep on playing because Andreas was simply not finding anything anymore. And uh, John was really able to kind of control the game and uh, put pressure on, on Andreas' life. Amazing. Anyway, both players are going to dive into their sideboards and we're going to catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two is about to begin and it's full on pressure for Andreas. It's a best of three. Remember that. So he has to win this to stay in it. And look at that. John taking another mulligan. He's like, I'm, I, I beat him taking a double. I can take one. Let's see what Andreas can do here. He has a turn one play in the form of a dark ritual. There is a him to Turek. So again, attacking the hand here of John, that's what uh, Andreas' deck wants to do, of course. So six cards in hand after that mulligan, he's going to lose two here, a swamp and a sinkhole. So four cards left. And he's also playing a The Wreck. So this is an optimal usage of his uh, Dark Ritual. Not quite sure why he untaps the Swamp there, by the way. It should be tapped, of course, for the Dark Ritual, but it's quite a nice turn one. Dark Ritual into him to Turek and then the Rack. I think that's pretty good. And here, John uh, playing a Swamp and a Pass turn. He's got four cards in hand, so no damage yet from the Rack. But if Andreas can find another him, for example, 
There's a planes though, so he needs double black for that and a pass turn. There is another Swamp and a Kumbach, which is the 1-3 that we saw in game one as well. Three cards in hand for John, so he's still in the safe zone. And the Witches can be quite annoying for Andreas, his uh, Royal Assassins. He's playing with two in the deck. Look at that. Andreas just passing turn, not finding anything. There's an attack, so he's going to drop to 19. And is John able to put some more pressure on? Okay, there's the Mishra's Factory. This really reminds me of game one where he won with just a Factory and a Kumbach Witches. There is another The Wreck. And an untap here from John, so he can now attack for three, which is kind of, well, I mean, Andreas tapped the planes, kind of signaling to John that he doesn't have a disenchant or a sword. So it's kind of a free attack here for John. Could swing in for three. Playing a mountain. And attacking, interestingly enough, not using the factory. So does he have a play? Yes, he does. Tapping four. That does mean he goes to two cards in hand, though. There is a Nevenerals disc. Interesting. So it does mean the wreck will do some damage, which is nice to see. I was looking forward to seeing uh, the wreck in action. There is one swamp for a paralyze on the Kumbach witches. So that means that if John wants to untap the witches, he's going to invest four mana. That's highly unlikely. He is going to take two points of damage here from the wreck. So that is good to see. The wreck doing work here for Andreas. And Andreas, again, he cannot really find any lands. There's an attack for two, it seems, by John. So that means uh, Andreas is going to drop to 16. Three cards in hand here for John. And just a pass turn. So again, Andreas has a land problem. He had a land problem in, uh, in game one as well. So he's very unlucky so far. There's just a pass. Four cards in hand now for John, I believe. He's going to swing in for two again. There's a Swords to Plowshares. Okay, taking care of the Mishra's Factory. So John goes up to 20. I really wonder what John has in hand there. Just passes the turn for now. I mean, John is also quite light on land. You know, only three lands is not that much. It's one more than Andreas, at least. I think in Andreas' hand, is he an animate dead and hypnotic specter? He could play an animate dead on... No, no, the Kumbach Witches are removed from the game, of course. Oh, no, that's the, the factory. Kumbach Witches is still there with the Paralyze on it. I think there are no targets for animate dead at the moment. No creatures in, uh, in both players' graveyards. I mean, if you're Andreas, if you look at his list, he really needs double black for his deck to work. And that's, of course, a problem at this moment. So he's just passing the turn. It makes sense. He needs uh, another swamp to get his deck going. Five cards in hand now for John. Tapping two. Are we going to see another Witches or perhaps a Black Knight? Untapping again. Of course, John also has Setch Troll. He now has the mana to end play Setch Troll and protect it with the regeneration. But he just passes the turn. Let's see what Andreas can find. Can he find its second swamp and uh, start playing out something? It looks like uh, Andreas is really in the tank at the moment. Perhaps he has a disenchant in hand and he's considering playing it. Okay, there's a scrubland. There's an hypnotic specter. Because what I wanted to say, if he would have a disenchant in hand, he could consider playing it on the disc to, to kind of force an activation. Look at that John now activating the disc on end step of Andreas after that hypnotic specter. Uh, Hit the board.
So I'm expecting something here from John. If he can find a fifth land, perhaps a Sangir Vampire. There's a Sangir Vampire. Oh, this is good news for John. Bad news for Andreas. But Andreas, of course, still has a full grip of cards. And for some reason, not untapping the lands, but I'm quite sure they're untapped. Okay. There's a balance. That's actually a nice answer, though. But he does have to, I think, discard two cards. And of course, John also losing two lands there to that balance. That's a really good balance. There's a discard of Kumbach Witches. So I guess Andreas now has four, uh, three cards in hand now. Let's see what John can do. Tapping two. There's a Kumbach Witches. It's funny to see so many Kumbach Witches in a, in a final. Both players... You know, kind of that black side of the deck is, is, you know, both players playing Hippie, both players playing Kumbach Witches, both players playing him to Turek. So there, there are quite some similarities there. Andreas here tapping three. There is the Hypnotic Spectre. Are we going to see a Bolt here on the Spectre? Not yet. There is a Badlands from John. There's a Drain Life on the Hypnotic Spectre. So again, the answer from John when it's needed the most. Andreas here dropping to 15. Three cards in hand, taking the turn. Let's see what he can find. A tap of two. Are we going to see a Black Knight animate that? Of course, he's still at that animate. And he's now getting back the Sengir Vampire. So Sengir Vampire is now a 3-4 because animate that gives a minus one, minus O. Oh. And that is quite nice. That's a good move by Andreas. I mean, if this animate can stick, and remember, it's, uh, it's difficult for, uh, for John to get rid of enchantments. With the color, with the colors he's playing, of course he's got the discs, but a disc is slow. I mean, if he would play a disc now, it'll take him a whole, uh, a whole turn before he can untap it and use it. Three cards in hand here for John. Tapping two black. There's a sinkhole. Probably going on a dual land exactly. Makes perfect sense. And it looks like it's a pass turn now by John. There we see Andreas untap. And he can actually start dealing some damage. That would be kind of nice. He could fly in for three. First he's going to play something, it seems. Perhaps another him to Turak. Changing his mind, though. Attacking first. Oh, interesting. He could, of course, use the Kumbach Witches to deal... Well, I mean, he's got Toughness of 4, so it's not going to work... Yeah, it's going to work with Lightning Bolt. He could use Kumb Kumbach Witches, deal 1 damage to Sengir Vampire, and then play a Lightning Bolt. I think that's what he's going to do now. So he's going to deal 1 damage to the Sengir. And then Andreas is going to deal 1 damage back, and there we see a Bolt. And that's quite nice. I didn't actually see that synergy when I was discussing the deck of uh, John, but that's very clever. Lightning Bolt with the Pinger. Because a, a lot of good creatures in old school have four toughness. So uh, by combining that, you can now uh, use your Lightning Bolt to shoot those uh, flyers out of the sky. Sarah Angels, Air Elementals, and the Sengir Vampires. Andreas here bringing in a mount, uh, sorry, a swamp. I want to say mountain, but of course that's a swamp. And he's got the Black Knight, but the Black Knight can be blocked by the Kumbach Witches. He is attacking, though. Interesting. I wonder if he's got something. 
And I'm sure Andreas is wondering the same. He is blocking though. So that means two damage on the Kumbach Witches. And Andreas just passing turns. He was just uh, bluffing. And John called his bluff. Two cards in hand now for him. There's an Hypnotic Spectre. And that can fly over the Black Knight. And that could be problematic for Andreas. He needs a sword. So now I'm going to draw for turn. Let's see if he can find something. Okay, Hypnotic Spectre of, of his own. That's an answer. Hippie on Hippie. I wonder if John's going to offer him to trade. Probably is going to depend on what he has in hand as well. Look at that attacking here. So he's offering Andreas a trade. And he's taking it. Does he have another Hypnotic Spectre? No, he's got a Setch Troll. And that's actually really good on this board because he's got enough mana to protect it with regeneration. It's a 3-3. Three, three. The Black Knight is only a 2-2. Two, two. Ooh, but this changes the scenario because now Andreas can double block with two first strikers. That makes it really difficult for John to kind of break through here. It looks like he's going to ping Andreas here for one. He's going to take a ping back. So Andreas now being on 14 and John on 15. Tapping four mana. What is he going to do? Nevenerl's Disc. That disc is actually quite good because he can regenerate the Satch. It would mean he's going to lose his, uh, his Kumbach Witches. So it's still a two for two, I guess, because he's losing then the Witches and the disc itself. And Andreas is also losing two cards with the two Black Knights. I wonder if John's going to ping again on end step of Andreas. Yep, that's exactly what he does. So this game two is by far more interesting than game one, by the way. Because now both players are kind of coming up with threats and answers. Two cards in hand here for John. What is he going to do? Okay, there is a strip mine. I think, I mean, if you're John and if you want to use the disc, you're probably going to do it on end step of Andreas because then you can end ping Andreas before the Witches dies. And you can, of course, the next turn immediately attack with your Setch Troll, dealing some damage. If John can, for example, find another sinkhole, by the way, he could uh, strip the planes of Andreas, sinkhole the other planes. And there we go. So pinging Andreas again with the Kumbach Witches. So Andreas 12 and John now 13. And he's now going to take his turn, I assume. So both players really, you know, taking their time. This is a final, of course. Looks like John wants to do something. He's going to put a regeneration shield on the set and he's going to use the disc. He's going to destroy both of the Black Knights, doing this on end step of Andreas. And now he's going to take his turn. Going to go up to two cards. And uh, I think this is a good move because now he can start swinging in for three. He's going to strip, I believe, a planes. That makes sense. Stripping a planes. Going to attack for three, I assume. Yeah, exactly. Attack here. Going to put Andreas on nine. There's an Hypnotic Spectre. Oh, it's looking bad again for Andreas. Pressure here from John. Andreas tapping two here. What are we going to see? A Kumbach Witches. That's not enough though. Meaning next turn, John, and that's this turn, John can now attack with both of his creatures, forcing Andreas to discard a card and potentially deal five uh, points of damage to Andreas. Andreas on nine. It's looking really bad for him. Remember, he's already one game down. Will John be the uh, number 21 champion of X points? Look at that. There's a block on the sedge. That means Andre is going to drop to seven because of the damage from the hippie. Oh, look at that. Also a him to Turek. So it doesn't even matter 
what Cardi loses to the Hypnotic Spectre. Oh, this is quite nice. Some cyborg tech here. That's going to deal five points of damage. Oh, five more points. What a play by Andreas. These are two cards that came in from the sideboard. A card from Legends. You can pay one blue, deal one damage to any target. Andreas is not playing with any blue. But when this card gets discarded, when you're forced to discard it, it deals five damage to the opponent. I love it. So that means that John's going to drop to three, but it looks like it's not going to be enough. John having one more turn after, or sorry, Andreas having one more turn after this one. Going to drop to two. There's a desert by John. Not very relevant, but what a play by Andreas. That was really fun to see. I believe the card's called Psychic Purge, a card from Legends. Andreas here. There's a sword. Ah, yeah, I mean, no, it's not enough. He's on two. I want to say he could sword to the sedge. Give him one more turn. It's not enough, though. I feel, Andreas, you've been very, very unlucky. I mean... Especially game one. I mean, game two, this was a thriller of a match. This is what I kind of expected uh, the games to be. But still, it was a very entertaining final. I would like to congratulate John uh, for winning here the X Points final number 21. And also, I would like to congratulate Andreas for reaching the finals with a The Rec deck. That was quite nice. Unfortunately, I couldn't really see The Rec blossom, but I'm sure you had some nice games with it. Let me know in the comments below, Andreas, when you see this. If you had some nice matchups with your direct deck here we can see the deck of andreas so he is our runner-up for uh, the final 21 and here we see the winning deck so this is john dittert's uh disco or troll disco deck i should say and a uh, really nice congratulations again john and uh, thank you both for sharing your match here on timmy talks and if you want to get into x points please check the description below because there you can find a link to the x points facebook page and uh, you can join for free and you can join the tournaments for free. So if you're interested, give a look, uh, click on the link and have a look at their Facebook page. Now, before you go, I'd like to ask you to do a few things. The first three things are completely free. That is like this video, comment on this video. And if you want to share it on your socials, all these things uh, are free and really help Timmy Talks move for, uh, further. They help the channel grow. And then I, I also have my own Patreon page on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. You can have a look at how you can support Timmy Talks financially as well. The cool thing is, if you support the show, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. And also, you have access to the Timmy Talks Discord, and you can join in all the Timmy Talks online events. So if that sounds like a plan, please check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And for now, I'd like to thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And now let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Somebody can see.